Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce a great defender of freedom, the president of your National Rifle Association, Mr. Ron Smites. Hey, I'm ready to go vote right now. How about you? Our freedom depends on it, so keep that passion burning. Thank you, Chris, for that stirring call. Great. As I begin my report, I want to thank you all for that warm welcome. I can't believe that it's been 10 years since we were last in Charlotte. Many of you were here 10 years ago. It was the beginning of the end for Al Gore. And the beginning of the end of the failed Clinton gun ban. and the beginning of a decade of incredible victories for the Second Amendment. You started it here 10 years ago, and with your help, we begin a new decade of new victories and great expansion of our freedom. <laughs> 10 years ago, we set a record of the largest annual meeting ever. Well, give yourself a hand because we're breaking the record again of the biggest meeting in NRA history. When I look back over the last decade, I'm humbled. Ten years ago, I was first elected to the NRA Board of Directors. Ten years ago, I was here and watched our president, Charlton Heston, stand on this stage and defy anyone who tried to pry away his freedom. I know one thing. Wherever he is, I'm sure Mr. Heston is still clinging to his guns, his Bible, and his freedom. And I know this. I know They'll never take that away from me, or you, or any of us. Not as long as we're breathing and voting and working hard to defend our rights. No one can replace Charlton Heston. But 10 years later, I'm truly honored to follow him to this stage as your NRA president. And I thank you for that great honor. The last year has been a real blessing for me and my wife, Ann. We've traveled the nation from Alaska to Texas, from California to New York, and points in between. I've met so many great NRA members, good, dedicated people who love our country and our association. Competitive shooters, hunters, instructors, law enforcement, and military servicemen and women. I've met black powder shooters, mothers training for personal protection, and families enjoying camping and shooting at the Whittington Center. Our NRA is so diverse, and today our NRA stands as strong and united as ever to defend our freedom and preserve our rights to lawfully use any firearm we want for any lawful purpose we want. We may each have our own individual interests, in a particular type of firearm or shooting, but we all share a common freedom, and we all share a common duty to defend that freedom for each other. I have felt that sense of unity and duty all across America. I've noticed something else during the past year. More and more people are reading and learning about the Constitution and Bill of Rights Americans are anxious. They're concerned about big bailouts, big health care, big taxes, and big government in general. And when you get down to it, Americans are worried. They're worried about their freedom, their own right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And they're taking it very personally. 
because it is personal. The grand notion of American freedom really boils down to the simple idea of freedom for one single America. For example, the U.S. Supreme Court will soon render a decision in the McDonald versus Chicago case. It's a big decision that could have a major impact on our Second Amendment rights. I was there when the court heard the argument in the case in March. And as I sat there in that grand setting of Rome justices, I was struck by a simple truth. When it comes down to it, one person, one law-abiding American citizen having access to common freedom, the Second Amendment, a case doesn't get any bigger than that. And that's why NRA was there. And that's why Wayne and Chris and all of us together fight the big fights and wage the large battles to preserve our rights. But the right for freedom for all doesn't get any better than the fight for freedom for one. Because if they can abuse the right of one, they can abuse the rights of all. Ask Gary Tedesco. He's a high school kid from Willows, California. Like so many of his friends and classmates, he likes to get up early and go duck hunting before school. He's thinking about becoming a game warden one day. He enjoys the outdoors, likes to hunt, and it helps put food on his family table. A lot of the media and elite may dismiss him, but Gary and his family are like hundreds of millions of regular Americans. They may not have much, but they don't ask for much either. All they ask is the chance to live lawful, peaceful lives without anyone interfering. But if you're among the powerful and the elite, you think you're smarter than the rest of us. You think you know better. And you better follow their rules or they'll crush you just because they can't. 